It's been called an environmental disaster of criminal proportions. Millions of automobile tires feeding a fire that has been burning now for nine days, spewing noxious fumes and toxic chemicals, producing an oily ooze that makes fighting the blaze a nightmare. Hundreds have been forced to flee their homes, and it may not be over for months. Here's an interesting tri trivia that is relevant to our subject tonight. The energy from burning one automobile tire is sufficient to heat one home for one day. When you consider that we have stockpiled between two and three billion used tires in this country, and that we are discarding approximately 280 million more every year, there is a certain compelling logic to using those tires protectively or productively. For the most part, however, we don't. The solution to today's scrap tire crisis. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That biblical prophecy holds true for most things. Most things in a landfill, at least. But not tires. A tire is a tire, and will be for hundreds of years. It won't decay. It won't stay buried. But it will catch fire, due to lightning, or as in the case of the Canadian catastrophe covered by ABC's Nightline, the results of arson. This fire is clearly a symbol of the problems we have in North America generally with stockpiling tires and not putting them immediately into recycling programs. And number two is that the oil that is the inevitable runoff from the meltdown from these uh, tires is going to go into Lake Erie. Used tires are a real problem and the is most people do not want tires can be shredded and chipped, they can be mixed with asphalt, used with rubberized asphalt on the road. But the market is just not big enough to absorb all the tires that we as a society wear out every year. And these piles, some with millions of used and unusable tires, aren't confined to Canada. There are no national registries of tire piles, but there are literally thousands of them. And literally thousands of ideas on what to do with them. From fishnets, to carpet backing, to hockey pucks. The processes currently existent to convert tires into such products, however, are simply unacceptable and unprofitable. Incineration, subjecting tires to direct and controlled flame, results in the generation of energy in the form of heat. But there's a heavy price for this single benefit. In fact, incineration of, of any hazardous waste, and tires are hazardous waste when they're incinerated, generate emissions much like the emissions that are generated at this fire and if we were burning all the, tox all the tires uh, that are stockpiled right now, we'd be probably generating far more contamination than this fire is right now. People don't want incineration of waste. People want waste to, waste to be reused and recycled. And in the case of tires, there's a whole range of things that can be done. And one of those things is pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is the thermal destruction or distillation of the rubber tire back to its original chemical ingredients. Gas, oil, carbon black, fiber and steel. It is therefore both an energy and material recovery process. During pyrolysis, the feedstock, such as tires, does not burn. It is not touched by flame. Instead, it is surrounded by heat, like a convection oven. This is the heat dissipating from 2,000 pounds per hour. You'll notice that it is very clean. The heat generated can be used in part as an energy source for the plant itself. In addition to the gas, an oil of 18,500 BTUs per pound, equivalent to commercial heating oil, is produced, along with carblack, which has good reinforcing characteristics for manufacturing various rubber products. In all, pyrolysis is far and away the method of choice, given that it's been the only choice thus far versus incineration. The, the process of conversion or pyrolysis that they use to make oil if it's done properly, with the proper scrubbers, is uh, probably going to be no more polluting than uh, a oil-fired burner of any kind. These byproducts of pyrolysis, however, because of their relative impurities, have to date had little real recycling value, other than the aforementioned hockey pucks, which is why you are viewing this video. Has taken the pyrolysis process one step further, with a patented process that will refine the pyrolysized material into a reusable and profitable product. 
The grade of highly purified carbon is pure enough to meet the requirements of 50% of the international market. It can be discounted in competition with commercial grades of carbon black for in inks, plastics, paints, and for other rubber products such as industrial hoses, roofing materials, mats and moldings. Each tire will yield the following resaleable byproducts. 60,000 BTUs of gas, one gallon of oil, and seven pounds of carbon black. Annually, will produce 90 billion BTUs of gas and 1.5 million gallons of oil. Enough energy to power 3,500 homes for a year. Additionally, it will yield 10 million pounds of carbon black. Today, the North American demand carbon black is 1.5 billion pounds annually. From recycled tires in an environmentally safe process, this alone tremendous viability is in the forefront of the industry. It's also in the New York Times, where an industry expert proclaims, as far as covering carbon black is concerned, this is the only sensible process to do it. The same article also reminds us that the need to find a use for scrap tires is mounting daily. At the same time, half of the country's landfills no longer accept tires. It's the now.